back with part two from unit six talking about seed germination, dormancy, and other topics. And the uh, process of uh, growing plants really starts with uh, germination. Uh, the seed um, takes in water through its seed coat and the growth of the embryo and the development of a seedling starts. Uh, what controls that process of germination is the dormancy that's built into seeds. Uh, dormancy is there so that uh, when uh, seeds fall out of the plant and hit the ground, uh, not all of the seeds immediately germinate. In our climate zone, uh, those seeds would be, uh, uh, those fall produced seeds would be wiped out by cold winter frost and uh, in any case it would not be um, good for the plant to have all of its seeds grow up around the base of the plant where the seeds might have dropped. So um, dormancy uh, requirements are built into seeds. They've adapted over a long period of time and they're designed to enable seeds to be uh, dispersed over time and space and to um, uh, germinate when conditions favor the uh, growth and survival of the plant. There's two types of dormancy. One is structural dormancy, which results from the seed coat. Um, seed coat needs to be um, needs to imbibe water, and uh, and it needs to be broken in some cases uh, in order to start the germination process. Uh, uh, a technique that I demonstrate in my video is scarification. Uh, which is the physical scratching of the seed coat to start the germination process. A uh, second type of dormancy is physiological dormancy and that results from the embryo uh, requiring certain conditions to start its growth and uh, the example of the uh, procedure that I demonstrate is stratification by uh, exposure to cold moist conditions which uh, is another technique of breaking seed dormancy. Now, um, in commercial seed production, uh, there are uh, several tests for seed quality uh, that accompany the documentation of seed that's sold to growers. Um, the, there's uh, several analytical techniques uh, designed to get at the quality of seeds. Uh, the first one is a germination test, uh, where the seeds are germinated under mo moist, warm conditions and a physical count is made of the seeds that germinate and the seeds that don't. Um, the second uh, method is a cold test where its seeds are subjected to a period of cold temperature before regular germination to assess their response to adverse conditions. Um, third one is TZ. Uh, TZ is a quick chemical test which dyes live seeds allowing a count of the proportion of live seeds in a given batch. Uh, TZ, tetrazoleum, doesn't um, really um, uh, define um, seed viability, but it does identify which seeds have live um, germplasm inside. And finally, uh, seed purity provides information on the physical condition of seed and the presence of other unwanted materials, uh, whether that be um, uh, chaff or uh, weed seeds. Those are um, uh, measured and quantified in, the, um, in a measure of seed purity. So in order to uh, certify the purity of a given batch of seeds, um, there are a number of ratios calculated. Uh, first is the percent of germination from the germination test. Uh, second, the percent of pure seed. Um, that is the proportion of the desired seed in, in a batch versus uh, uh, other uh, contaminants. Uh, the next percent is the percent of other crop seeds, uh, contamination from other crops. And then uh, inert materials, chaff, and percent of weed seed. Uh, obviously, when you're planting seeds in your garden or lawn or a crop, 
uh, you definitely don't want contamination from uh, from a lot of weeds. So this uh, viability, and, uh, a couple more issues of viability and longevity. Viability is the proportion of seed uh, in a batch that's capable of germinating. Uh, one test is the TZ test, um, but uh, a better test is the uh, germination test that we talked about earlier. And then uh, that viability of seeds is uh, affected by how long and how the seeds are stored. So uh, longevity is a measure of how long the seed uh, remains viable in storage. And uh, uh, generally seeds uh, last much longer when they're stored in uh, cool, dry um, conditions. And that's why the uh, seed uh, vault in Norway, deep uh, in the abandoned mine under very cold temperatures, are, uh, that vault is intended to uh, keep seeds viable for decades or hundreds of years. And then the documentation that comes with seeds, you can look this over, um, uh, gives very detailed documentation of where uh, the seeds were uh, produced, how long they were stored, um, and all of the information about the uh, uh, germination tests and um, the agency certifying the seeds. Seeds can be damaged in storage. Um, they can be damaged in any phase, in harvesting, threshing, or handling. Um, for commercial seeds, the proper moisture content is critical. And um, too moist seeds uh, will likely uh, rot or, um, or um, be exposed to pathogens. Uh, too dry seed will crack and uh, uh, be uh, destroyed in that way. So uh, once seeds uh, germinate and uh, the emergence of uh, new plants begins, of seedlings begins, a whole new set of issues uh, uh, starts. Uh, and some of these we've covered already. Uh, the environmental conditions required for germination uh, uh, include moisture. Seeds must imbibe moisture to initiate germination. Uh, they have to be exposed to the correct temperatures um, and that prompts uh, the action of hormones uh, and uh, uh, biochemical reactions required for plant growth. Uh, here is a photo of a lemon where the seeds have uh, germinated right inside the fruit. Uh, you may uh, also see examples of this sometimes uh, in pumpkins and other uh, uh, other plants where the seeds can't wait to uh, to germinate and get going uh, even before they're exposed to soil um, and other environmental conditions. Uh, seeds need to have light uh, and especially uh, uh, small seeds require um, direct sunlight. In the case of other seeds, um, uh, light may inhibit germination and they need to be buried to a certain depth uh, before uh, they'll germinate. Uh, seeds uh, require oxygen for respiration, uh, so they must be in soil where there's sufficient pore space and drainage in order to uh, get the uh, oxygen that they need. And they need to be disease-free uh, pathogens, especially fungal. Um, uh, infections can uh, destroy seeds or especially the, uh, the small seedlings. Uh, one reason why uh, sterile soil is used in greenhouse production uh, is to keep the uh, try to keep the uh, fungus away from the uh, baby seeds, the baby seedlings. So how do we improve uh, germination capacity? Um, Physical treatments, uh, scratching, uh, this is scarification discussed earlier, uh, exposure to the right temperature uh, weakens the seed coat uh, through high temperatures. Uh, some plants need to be exposed to fire or smoke in order to uh, uh, germinate. And as mentioned earlier, some uh, species require uh, sunlight or exclusion from sunlight. So tilling the soil or exposing uh, seeds to certain types of light can uh, also assist in the germination process. 
Uh, chemical treatments uh, through acid can soften the seed coat. Uh, leaching of uh, nutrients uh, through soils can soften the seed coat. Um, or uh, sometimes seeds need to be primed by exposure to certain chemicals, uh, giving the seeds a, a head start in the germination process. And these are all uh, manipulations that can be performed in horticultural settings. So what happens to the seeds once prepared for planting? Well, they can either be uh, sown directly into uh, the soil where they'll be grown, uh, which is convenient, uh, very uh, easy to mechanize, at least in the case of corn and soybeans and other um, uh, commodity crops. Um, seeds can be planted uh, through um, broadcast seeding in rows or placed in individual holes. Um, however, there are some disadvantages. Uh, species with tiny seeds are difficult to work with, and uh, even with 100% germination uh, due to uh, fungal diseases and other problems, 100% uh, stand uh, is not guaranteed. Uh, indirect seeding uh, is at least a two-stage process. It's what I follow in my greenhouse. Uh, I raise the seeds initially in, uh, in uh, seed trays and then transplant them into pots for further planting. Uh, there's some advantages uh, in that uh, only healthy, healthy seed, seedlings are transplanted. So uh, the uh, plants going into the pots have a 100% initial um, survival rate. Uh, crops can be established uh, indoors in greenhouses. Um, and uh, can uh, reach harvest more quickly. And then a reduced time in the field um, uh, also uh, means less time exposed to uh, potential adverse conditions out in the, uh, out in the field, flooding, um, uh, uh, drought, and uh, um, pests. Uh, however, there's uh, also disadvantages to indirect seeding. I'll, I'll, for, they basically boil down to a lot of extra work and expense. So I'm going to talk about a couple of other topics in part three, and uh, we'll wrap it up with a discussion of the discussion uh, board and the assignment for unit six.